Hi everyone, today I will be sharing three tips for those of you who want to up your Dota Underlords game. These tips will be related to mage lineups. So let's get started with the first one. Plasma Field from Razor is a sick, sick ability. It doesn't look very good at first glance. The magic damage isn't anything to write home about until you realize that Plasma Field hits every unit twice so the damage that plasma field does is actually double the amount stated a two star razor can do 350 magic damage per zap and that's before accounting for the mage uh, alliance with the minus magic resistance what this means is if you're going for a full six mage lineup you don't want to stop at a two star razor even after getting a 2-star Razor, you want to keep buying Razors from the shop because if you complete your second 2-star Razor, you're going to put it on the board as I do here. I have two Razors here and looking at the damage chart, you can see how both of them contributed pretty significantly to damage. At the very least, it will force your opponents to all spread their heroes around so they don't all take damage from Razors Plasma Field. Remember that Razor's ability only has a 3 square radius, so it won't hit every single enemy on the board, which means you do need to position your Razor in the front rather than at the back of your lineup. Speaking of which, that was a positioning mistake I made um, in the video. I should not have put my Razor at the side of the board. I'm going to fix that right here, and you can see that now the Razors are further towards the middle of the board, which means that the Razor Plasma Fields will hit more units. The next tactic we are going to discuss involves the item Dagon. Now at first glance, because Dagon deals a set amount of damage, it seems like it doesn't really matter which hero you put the Dagon on. But that's not true, because in Dota Underlords, whenever a unit does damage, and that includes damage from items, they regenerate mana and Dagon does a lot of damage. So whoever's holding the Dagon will get a big burst of mana. Because of this, you want to put it on your most mana-hungry heroes. In a mage lineup, that would be the Keeper of the Light as well as the Lina. Lich is also a good candidate, but I haven't found a Lich in the shop in this particular game. So did you catch the power of the Dagon in this particular round? I'm gonna replay the video, Look out for the Lina and the Keeper of the Light at the start of the battle, as well as the opponent Tidehunter. Did you see that? As soon as the Tidehunter went below half health, the Dagon just went BOOM and it died. Um, because of this, the Tidehunter didn't even get to cast its ultimate. And neither did Kunkka. As you see here, Kunkka dies while being silenced against all the burst damage from the mage lineup. The fact that my team didn't eat a tight hunter ravage or a kunkka boat to the face meant that I was able to better survive this match. It was a very close one. Uh, the Medusa was pummeling into my team, but with the power of burst damage, the Dagon and my mages firing off the spells early on in the battle, we were able to barely pull off a victory in this round. So how do you get your mages to fire off their skills quickly? That leads us to our final tactic we'll discuss today. Arcane Boots. This item is one that every mage lineup could use. The ability to regenerate mana to adjacent allies. Obviously, if you are looking to maximize the use of this item, you want to place it on, the, on a hero in the middle of your formation to maximize the number of allies that receive this extra mana. What is less obvious, however, is the fact that it will activate earlier in the battle if you put it on a hero that has lower maximum mana. Arcane Boots triggers on as soon as the carrying hero reaches 50% of their max mana. The lower the max mana, the faster they'll activate the boots. So, the one hero that best uses this is Bat Rider with a maximum mana of 20, this dude will be able to fire Arcane Boots off pretty much right as, as soon as the battle starts. So, 
It is a match made in heaven. Bad Rider works incredibly well with arcane boots, doubly so in a mage lineup where you want your spells to fire off before your opponents do. In mage versus mage lineups, the game often comes down to whose nukes go off first, who is able to land kills on the opposing enemy heroes first. Look at my formation here in the final round of the game. Isn't it just beautiful? You have the ideal hero in Batrider sitting in the middle of my 3x3 box, generating mana for all the spell casters around it. Notice how early the Batrider casts the arcane boots and then the torrent of magic spells that follows soon after. The Puck Illusory Orb, the Lena Laguna Blade, and of course our sick, sick Plasma Field. That completely overwhelms our opponent here. As I switch over to their side of the battle, I see that they aren't able to make a dent in my 3x3 formation. All their scrappy inventors fell to the ground and they lost all their hit points. So I'm victorious with these mage strats this game. Mage Knights is one of the most powerful lineups in the current meta game, simply because Dragon Knight is an utter beast of a hero. Your mages fire off their nukes, and if there are any remaining surviving enemy heroes, Dragon Knight cleans up with its splash attacks. Um, the knight synergy fits very well with the mages because, well, <laughs> Bat Rider and Dragon Knight by themselves make a very good duel and also the dragon synergy is just served to you on a silver platter because uh, Puck is already a dragon which enables Dragon Knight's uh, dragon form. So yeah, managed to pull off a win here with six mages despite not finding a single lich or having fi um, final flash as one of my items. I hope you found this video and the tactics informative. In the meantime, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.